Comets and More for the 2024 Stone Burner Open. I'm the Black Shadow, your host and commentator. Uh, first of all, I just want to say uh, apologies to folks that there hasn't been a ton of games. Or there's only been one game that we've covered uh, in the past week or so. Uh, unfortunately, as those of those been following the channel and our Discord server will know, uh, at the end of stream I started doing, was it last Monday I think it was, and towards the back of it, I noticed that my throat wasn't doing too great. Uh, and it turned out that I have had a full-blown throat infection. I've been on antibiotics uh, the past several days or so. Um, even now it's not 100% truthfully, but it's decent enough where I feel I can start you know, trying to do some more games and covering for you guys. I know obviously you really enjoyed the content. It's nice to be able to make these as well. I was trying to learn a lot about, him, uh, about Uprising even. Uh, so yeah, uh, apologies for that. But we are kind of trying to get back slowly onto the train here. So uh, let's have a look. We're going to look at action for Group R today. Uh, featuring four of the top five players from the group. Evie Bomb, Lannister, Rick Troll, as well as B. Raffi is the table for you guys here. Uh, yeah, Evie Bomb and Lannister both winning their opening games of the round. Evie taking it down with Wardeeb, as well as Lannister going with Margot Fenring in their opening games. Uh, and meaning they take the opening six points. Uh, Rick, though, to be fair, getting second place was not bad going either. Uh, and B. Raffi is still plenty in the mix. A slightly changed for it, of course, for our scoring. Uh, us doing 6 3 2 1 now as opposed to the 5 3 2 1 we've done previously speaking. But other than that, uh, the other main change is obviously that we are playing Do Not Rising now, no more X and Immortality for this competition. Qualifications is that the top two of each group make it through directly into the quarterfinal knockout stages of the competition. Third, fourths, and fifths of all groups will have to go through a separate wildcard round where it's simply winner progresses to the knockout stages in the quarters as well. So uh, a nice buy for the top two. And you would argue if either Evie Bowen Lannister can win uh, this game today, uh, they would be feeling very confident that they can secure one of the two top spots. Not guaranteed by any stretch of imagination. Uh, the extra points available in games means things are a little bit swingier. Uh, but as long as they avoid like two complete disastrous results, uh, you'd be thinking they'd feel very confident making through the top two. So plenty for them to play for here. All right, everyone. So we get ourselves set up for the match here. Uh, it is uh, Cloudy Faces in up with the first player token in red again, which means it will be Rick Troll to pick first here. Uh, I'll do my damnedest with the state of commentary here, but uh, we'll slightly see how things go. So let's look at what's going on here. Uh, opening contrast, have a look, is the High Council and Spice's Flow. So both of these are mid to late game. No early, like, water for, like, going Spice or Firing or card draws or anything like that. So kind of a bit mid gamey means that diving for te uh, contracts is not going to be as interesting at the start. People aren't really wanting to go to accept contracts as much. But the High Council bump is pretty nice. As for the Imperium Rohab, which is the more important thing probably at the moment, uh, we've got some decent cards here. I would say nothing excessively, like, amazing. But there's a lot of solid cards here. Sardar Car coordination is very fun. It makes the quest space very, very interesting. It has some interesting synergy with the likes of uh, Irulan and uh, the Emperor as well. Vision is pretty nice, obviously, for just getting worms in. Also, it's a very strong reveal, by the way. People uh, sleep on the reveal for that. Very, very strong. Uh, so versus the Visor is effectively like a kind of a modified power play. Get too influenced and trash the card. you got to send it to a faction space via a spy. Run performance, a nice solid one. Uh, being able to put spies on the factions. And for can still tent is also okay. Getting to put an extra couple of troops in off of mining. That water reveal is also very nice. Very battle orientated. And obviously some pairing there with leadership as well. As for our leaders here. We are missing Margo. Um, and we are also missing... Uh, still trying to remember who we're missing here. Uh, Lady Jessica, which, you know, is not too big a deal here. So, uh, Gurney, Wadi, Fader Alpha, all out there. All the fighters. Uh, Stabarn Tuek, very difficult to see him getting picked here. There's not a lot of faction access. It's a bit dicey. Uh, could definitely see Shadam or Irulan getting picked here, uh, purely because of the uh, Sardaukal coordination pairs, specifically with both of them. Um, so I would expect to see a lot of combat here. This could be a very, very violent game, and then maybe like an Irulan or Carino on the side trying to pick their spots, but that's what I expect to see here. So Rick picking first. 
taking uh, taking Fader out for here, which is solid. Fade, fade's solid in all positions. Uh, you could go combat heavy, might just go a bit more deck building, kind of waiting to see kind of how the game plays out. I think that's what Fade does. He's a, kind of a bit of a non-committal pick. You can kind of go uh, either way with things uh, with him. You know, you can go really aggressive early, or you can decide to kind of slow play a little bit and wait for later on. You know, see how things go. I think it's totally fine. Eevee up next. Eevee one deep in third. Not the most usual space to take him. But figures I want him in the first round. We'll go with him again. Irulan taking for Lannister. Not surprised. He does play Irulan a fair amount. Kind of going down the Marga route. I suspect he'll be after Sobaka coordination if he can get hold of it. Leaving Cloudy Face, who's got Gurney Halleck as an option. And it seems difficult to see how you would turn Gurney down here. So I'm just trying to get my camera in the right place here. We're still getting used to everything, kids. It's it's a thing. All right, that'll have to suffice here. Okay, then. So let's look at the opening uh, stuff going on here. So it is the Dagger Skirmish. So Influence Bump here is going to be diving for hooks for sure. Staban 2x taken. Wow. He took Staban? That seems a little wild. Subversive is only a, a one-time use. He does remember that, right? Pulls his ring, pulls his Diplo. So basically the best opening draw here. But he kind of feels he's got to use both cards. If he was relying on early revealing, he's going to have to give something up here. So it's a bit awkward. Um, Irulan has got one faction. One faction for Wardeeb. Faction and ring for Fade. Staban just goes ahead and just uh, friend kits it. Standard-ish move. Not so standard for Staban, though, but it is blocking a bit. He'll put surely both troops in here. Sorry, let me just turn up tabletop. So it's a little bit quiet there. Sorry about that. So a bit of a weird opening here for Irulan. Is she just going to go accept contract and try and draw for a big card? Looks like that's going to be the case. Going to look to try and get off at some point this round. I guess that's what you're going to do, so I don't hate that. Peels off research stations, the next uh, next contract's pretty desirable. Like, it's hard for Mwadib not to go Desert Tactics here. It really is. Like, But you're committing yourself. If you go in and win, like you're going off the siege and... Uh, and you're going to try and work. The thing is, you're not guaranteed to get access. Your ring's coming, but you've also got Diplo coming as well. It's a little bit awkward. But it's very tempting. And obviously, Mardi, very important for him to get Worms as soon as humanly possible. So is it worth the gamble? <laughs> okay, last offering his own bit of commentary. I mean, it's very hard to see how anyone else takes aversive, but Staban might be going for it. I'm not entirely sure what Staban's plan is here. Yeah, I think he has to go to his tactics. I think it's it's too difficult to turn down. And he trashes the Doom card, keeping the dagger in hand, so committing himself. They usually you trash the dagger a lot of the time, but that shows you the story here. Fade off to Arakeen with the um, going with the bump as well here. He's pulled his Diplo as well, so he figures he, he's going to go in for the combat here. This is bad news for Muad'Dib. This is very bad news for Muad'Dib. This is not what he wanted, but again, the spy and people just trying to rush for hooks immediately. You know, when it's the skirmish influence bump, like people will just go all in for it because it's just immediate siege access. So it's the barn off next. He's got his, uh, he's got his signet ring. Can has to use it. Does he want to keep the water? He does. I think putting up in the council makes sense. I think you just want to make that trade here at the moment and rock and roll from there. You're going to get a spice back from the combat. There's no way Irulan's getting involved here. Irulan probably off to deliver supplies, I would imagine. Secrets you could do, but deliver supplies is such a good spot. Getting that water early is always pretty damn nice. Can't see him going dutiful here, though it does have play into the trait. Does decide to play in for the trait and go high council. So going very committed into the uh, spice of slow strategy here. Just going to let the others just beat the crack up at each other. Interesting. I think I would have gone to the supplies there. Very tempting. So Muad'Dib in a horrible spot now. Muad'Dib knows that he basically can't win. Um, he can commit everything. So he's going to go for an intrigue. Give up on it. Pulls go to ground, which is actually very useful for him here. That's a really good pull. Fade has his other dagger, so he's not concerned. Staban with four. So he will just pick up coordination, I guess. There's the truth chance of what he wanted here. Irulan's going to get hold of Subversive. 
And he's going to be able to put the spy back at the Fremen here. So he'll be hoping to redraw that ASAP. Wadib obviously can just retreat his troop and get an extra spy somewhere. I don't know where that's going to be going, though. Does he just spy up Hagger Basin immediately before Staban can get there? That seems very powerful. Couple to buy. Looking at Reliable Fall. It's a good card. Capture Mentor comes off. It's a great card. It's one of my favorites in the game. Uh, and uh, they definitely can't take that. Mm. Wrong take. So, uh, yeah. He wants that, but he can't get it. So, Eevee should just retreat here. No reason not to. Yep. Got to put the Spartan Hagger Basin before um, before Saban blocks that up, surely. No, he's going to put it onto Siege. He thinks he's he's going to try and uh, to guarantee his access there. I guess that's also totally fine. I think both are good options. But fade to be happy. Worm access. Pair combat. For fairly cheap as well. Only three troops. You'll be fairly happy with this. We'll move on. <coughs> Sorry. Throat infections are a bitch. Uh, oh, we get an intrigue for Stabart. Oh, my poor Siege Ritual. That is so good for him. Wow. That's that's unbelievably strong. He actually can access the Siege as well. That's that's a pretty insane draw. Round two is up. Shadow Contest. It's an Ornithopter combat. So no pairing available here. The bump of the Bene Gesset will be of interest. Irulan, I think, is going to go pretty aggressively here because of the daggers in hand. Second place is still pretty good here at the Intrigue Spice and Troop. Dagger goats. Some Wadib off to Fremkit. No shocks here. So Staban 2 Egg can actually get in the way of, of some fun here. It'll be interesting to see how uh, Staban approaches Siege Ritual. He probably has to... It's going to be difficult to get the Siege Ritual Siege Tower in time, though, because Fade's always going there. So that's kind of a bit awkward. So Stabon will have to pick his spot here. Surely he's got to go Hagger Basin, you'd imagine. Hagger Basin, maybe put the spy on the other council spot, just turn it into six cash. I don't hate that. Maybe... Go Hagger Basin, spy up Hagger Basin. It's also fine. There's going to be a ton of action there, of course. I think you should probably spend the water, though, and get the get the spy. Uh, and get the spice, though. I don't think you want to give that to an opponent here. I think the it's pretty good, pretty good for you here. The only issue is if you put the spy up there, you get the six coins. Well, you're basically just threatening spice refinery at all times. So, I think that's the way I would probably approach this. Maybe go Hagger Basin with Dune, and then threaten Signet Ring to Spice Refinery. Or you could just go Spice Refinery directly and do it this way. I guess this is also okay. It's going to cost you the Spice regardless, so... Yeah, he's going to have to... Oh, no, this doesn't make sense. No, he should go there and not spend the Spice. If he wants to get Swordmaster immediately, he could just go there and not spend the Spice at Refinery. Get up to five, and then keep the Spice to send up to the other account spot to get to eight. That's what I think he should do here. I think that's actually slightly better, and I think that's what he's saying. He's like, actually, I've done the maths wrong. Should be fine to change it. Yeah. And that's what he's just realized. He's done the maths a little bit wrong there. He's only got the, the one Spice, so... So he should go to free, have the spice. So. Yeah, they're just correcting it here now. So he goes back there. He'll retake the move. I think he, I think this is fine. Just getting the Swordmaster done is okay. But I guess if you're going to do this, you might as well just go Hagger Basin. Yeah. This is also just fine. So Irulan will seek allies. We'll be going to get Dutiful, get so their intrigue. 
all going all in on high council. Fines contingency. It's always a nice one to have early. So Mardi could go seat if he wants. He does have the spy access there. He probably has to because he gets in the way of Hagger Basin. So he's probably... This is mandatory, I think. Pause his Diplo. Didn't really want to see it, but what are you going to do? Does he decide to get stuck in or not? It's a bump. Bumps are nice. You'll put in at least a second troop, but I don't think you'll commit otherwise. Obviously not comfortable with your alarm having the entry. It's a little bit awkward. But if you put it all in, like you're going to win almost all the time. Fade will just go supplies. So he's off to deep desert worms. He's hoping the next conflict is not walled. So Stabarn now can aspire to finery and do what he was going to do anyways. So we decided to take the spice instead of going for the sword. I actually think that's probably better. Just cut that off there. Get the spies going. It's probably good here. So Irulan with a couple will take prepare the way. No end close to getting the draw off that. That's the only problem. But, you know, you can always trash with the ring get the two spice. Wadiv gets out of Steel Guard, which is absolutely insane. Uh, Imperial Spy Master for Fade Raffle is also very strong here. A couple of lot of good cards now. Benny just operative over there as well. Here comes Siege Ritual to get rid of the dagger. So he gets his access to Siege. He might not get there, though. Depends. See what happens. Um, and takes the um, and takes that Benny Operative, which is always nice to have there for the spies. Bear in mind, Spark from Generation here does not match to Barnes' ring ability. So nothing will be played here. So we'll just take the rewards as is. Special mission for Aerial Arms. Pretty good. Secure Spice trade for Mwadib is what your alarm was looking for, funny enough. It is a war conflict. Siege of Arakeen is up. Okay, now that's going to be interesting. Both Mwadib and Fader Alpha were getting ready for worms. But it's a war conflict. This is terrible news for them. So Mwadib's going to have to just uh, change plans here and go gather supplies and start putting some spies down. Probably on the, the Bene Gesserit. Yeah, it makes sense. What is Fader Alpha going to do here? He was really hoping this was not going to be a wall conflict, but it is. This is not good for him, but, you know. Some of the time it has to happen, so I think he's just going to espionage, stop putting spies down. It's exactly what he does. Pulls his ring. It was his last card. Makes sense. stavan has got her coordination. Just goes dutiful for espionage. Okay. I would have been honestly legitimately tempted to go, like, basin... Swordmaster and literally Sadukar uh, with coordination and frighten the combat. I think that would have been very interesting, but decides not to. Irulan now gets her siege access. Isn't this the bar decided not to go siege himself, by the way? I was a little curious. Refinery for Paul. He's just going to chuck dudes in. Irulan's got got eight persuasion but there's no huge cards out there also nothing to trash for spice i was imagine you would just probably trash out dune or something does fate just go siege to block i think he goes to siege to block he might even go siege and actually blow the wall here i could actually legit see that happening because he's he thinks he just wants to guarantee worms next round He's been inconvenienced once. He does not want to be inconvenienced again. I think this wall's going. He's thinking about it, but I, I suspect this wall's getting blown. Bit of a gamble always when you've got more deep on your right. But it does go indeed. Thing is, he's been forted once. He's not going to get forted again here. So he's off to uh, rock and roll. Interesting that he's got daggers in hand. Yeah, he's got he's to trash that. Does he get involved here? If he puts in two, he's going to get the money and... People want Swordmasters. He slips in. Figures to Barn isn't getting involved enough at the time. So it's the Barn off the Swordmaster. Will he draw? I think he'll draw. His hand's pretty bad. He finds Benny Operative. That's really nice. 
He's going to desperately try and get the secrets here. Irulan might get in the way, though. We'll see. So Irulan's going to double draw Arakeen here and try to try to get a little lucky here. Does try and prepare the way. Gets up to 10 persuasion. So we'll keep hold of, of the prepare to get the spice must flow. Yep. Took a little chance there. Wasn't guaranteed, but did find it. Smart a couple of daggers, a couple of buy. Fadeke looks pretty good for him. Does go for it. Corinth City comes off, by the way. It's a really strong card. So the Barn 2X got five persuasion. He's short on it. He spoils for Faye. This is the promo card from North Carolina. It is part of the mod. Stavon's just got to go secrets. There's there's no way about it. Like, I mean, Elon's got massive persuasion. I know you're after Captured Mentor. It is a good card, but I don't think your Elon's taking enough of the time. I think not going secrets is just a terrible move. You have to hit there, but you've got it. Finds reinforcements. It's a nice little intrigue. Free Solari for two troops and redrawing another intrigue here. Gets obviously a spy wherever they want. And they will block up uh, Hagger Basin. Which makes sense. It's been left open. So Irulan with nine. She goes Spice was Flow. Does go for the Spice was Flow. So that will mean Acquire. Uh, that is cashed in and gets the bump. And I imagine he'll be looking to try and trash that with his ring later on is going to be the plan. Which is definitely a much more easier strategy to do getting Spice was early with Irulan than it is with most other people. Because you can trash them and get the Spice back. Four for Staban. I still think he made the right choice. I think I would have done that. Capture Mentor is such is a good card, but I think you've got to get secrets. There's quite a few intrigues that give you the card anyways and redraw. I think you'll just go prepare. He's kind of looking at Maula a bit, but I think he'll just go prepare. You've also got uh, Treading Darkness isn't a bad card. Irulan will use the free daggers. Figures, what the hell? Might as well. It's a it's pretty much guaranteed win. Uh, so we'll take down Arakeen. Having that flag down is always pretty useful. A couple of troops are nice. A couple of coins as well is going to be going looking to go high council here. And we'll move on. Okay, next up. Wow, it's actually the other uh, fault, another fault to come back. Tesla loyalty is up. And Fader Alpha is about to be going on a journey here. Wadi Paul Stilgar. Oh, and irulan has got a hideous hand. Really, really difficult hand here for Irulan. Horrible draw. Staban's got coordination again. Staban needs to start finding his way to Sadukar. He's got to make good use out of that. There's a ton of spice at Imperial Basin. Fade's only got the one triangle, so he's kind of forced to go deep desert here. I think Stavan 2X should be looking to go Imperial Basin here and then hit coordination um, with Sadokar. A hundred percent. I think that's a fantastic move for him here. Yeah, Fade wants to hit both spy spots, but he just hasn't drawn it. He gives he's gonna put the spy up there, and that he's gonna use um his spy master to do it this way instead. So they know the worms are coming. Be unfortunate for Stavan. Would have been really nice to make that work, but it hasn't. So how does he want to proceed here? Irulan does have access to Privilege now. Stavan's got his Sword Master. I don't know how often he's going to High Council. He's going to Spice of Fire regardless. I think he's going to start putting troops, uh, spies on the faction spaces, I think, so he can start changing. Uh, you can do that and then spend two Slurry for an entry, which isn't bad. Probably send it up to the Emperor with coordination. Could definitely see that happening. Uh, yeah, he's got to put a spy down somewhere. It is mandatory. So he puts it down. Does he pay for the intrigue? Or is he going to put it on the council spot? He's going to put it on the council spot. Okay. So Irulan trying to dig her way out of trouble. Finds the signet ring. Which means she can now trash by this flow. It's a about the best card she could have found there. It's a huge pull, that. 
Ilan's got to try to win this, of course. Here's a matching conflict. It's a fantastic conflict for her in the situation. No spies down. The money would be useful. It's an alliance she's after. But the worms are coming. This is the only problem. Here comes Wadib with Stilgar. Just absolutely barrels it in here. Just absolutely rips it all in. And this is the thing. Tessa Loy is one in the situation. This is just They're just going to throw it all in here. Wadib... It does not have Swordmaster access, by the way, which is pretty insane. So, uh, Iran's going to get a little fortunate here. <coughs> Sorry. So what does Fade want to do? Does he rip in his own worms? He can't beat Muad'Dib is the problem. Muad'Dib's got too much. He can go... Is it worth... Ooh. Oh, no. I mean, if he takes it out, Fade might go for it. It's kind of a weird spot here for Fade. He kind of wants to worm this. But he only really wants to worm it if he's going to win. Worming and getting second place, especially off Deep Desert, isn't great. He's got to feel like he's got to win this. I don't think he believes he can. But he does have another spy at Spacing Guild. He could rip it in and look to try and get over the line with the spy. But Wadib does also have desert, desert tactics access, and he's gonna and, and Wadib's committed himself here. Also, Siege is still sitting there. Hard for Faye to pull the trigger. Decides not to. Finds Counter's ambition, which is pretty nice. So what does the Saban want to do here? No need to get in any more troops. You just hit Doomful again. Two good contracts out there. Research Station and the Highliner contract with the troops. There's such a powerful contract in this sort of game as well. That's a that's a veritable worm killer, that Highliner contract. Does Stabantuic have access to the spacing gear with this game? I'm not even sure he does. It's pretty wild. I think if I was Staban, I actually would have played Mercenaries to redraw and see what I get, and maybe even go Imperial Privilege, but he, he does go Dutiful. He can still do so. I think this is just a solid move. Oh, he'd have to go here first, I guess. There's no need to play Reinforcements right now. Oh, he's going to do it. It does play into uh, Sardaukar Coordination, so he does opt to do it now. Wow, look. oh my god, he commits immediately. He doesn't even look to see what the intrigue is. He should always look. Oh, oh my god. Oh my holy goodness. Wow. This is a car wreck from Wadib coming here. Unless he gets lucky and pulls an intrigue that saves him. How in the world has Stabarn Tuet just pulled Spring the Trap? How has he done this? That is insane. Irulan, by the way, is being allowed to do basically anything she wants right now. Surging into the lead. No one is doing anything about her, just letting her just take points wherever she wants. This is what Irulan can do in a battle heavy game is you just kind of you just kind of go under the radar a little bit. Wadi thinks he's got this in the bag. I can very be sure he doesn't. He's got five persuasion. He's interested in Corinth City. He's going to espionage to try and pick it. Finds reliable and his ring. He did not want to draw those. He's at seven, but that's awkward. Phaedra Alpha with four. Just takes Mala Pistol. It's not looking good here for Ricky. He's in some trouble this game, I think. He is seeing obviously on deep desert, but that's about his only only thing he's got here. Staban's got to make a decision here what he wants to do. He might go assembly hall and try and fluke another intrigue. You can see that happening. Except contracts the other option. There's no point going privilege. It seems wild. He's gonna have a support. I guess that's also okay. I think, yeah, I guess that's also fine. I don't know if I'd have pulled the the card, but he actually pauses. 
convincing argument. Gets up to five, so suddenly Captured Mentat is now on. Though surely Irulan's going to get in the way of that. Oh no, Crom City's out there, so going for that. Yeah, let's say Irulan's just being allowed to do anything she wants here. Wadi with seven. Captured Mentat looks really strong. Cactus of Power's out there. It's a pretty nice card. Some decent stuff out there, but we'll surely go Leadership. Inherent, obviously, synergy with Mardib's strategy. The problem is, though, how often is he getting the worms in this game? I don't know. If the other players want to block him from getting worms, he's going to have a real miserable time of it. Like, Irulan and Staban do not have gone to Siege. Doesn't mean they can't go to Hager Basin, but he's going to bank that they don't get involved here. If he feels he's behind, he's got to gamble a little bit. Back to Staban here. With five persuasion, this is a car wreck. Smwadi is not going to believe what he sees here. Um, Wadi gets the intrigue. Get strategic stockpiling. It's a really powerful intrigue here, but it's not useful for him at the moment. And this is the worst conflict for him for it as well. This doesn't help him at all. Wow, this is this is absolute carnage from Stepan. Surely he's got to do it as well. He's committed way too much. Gotta pull the trigger here. No, he doesn't. He doesn't do it. Okay, well, huge result for Mardi. Mardi, wow, doesn't pull the trigger. He's happy to sit with free troops for free, free Solari. I'm a little surprised. The amount of damage that would have done to Mardi. I'm very surprised. Giving him two spies and just points like that. Yes, you think he's going to wait for a pair of combat, but I think if I'm Staban, I'm pulling the trigger there a lot of the time. That really surprises me. I get why you wouldn't do it, but... Hmm. You know, so we just see it differently. All right, next up is Spice Freighters. It's a... It's a Dagger Conflict. Only person that matches Wardeeb. Really hard to see how Wardeeb's gonna get back to this. Though, but who knows at this point. Maybe Stabarn feels he'd rather leave Spring the Trap for a round three conflict. Yeah, he's off the seat here. Not surprised seeing this. I guess he figures what he's gonna do. He's gonna bank on a tier three conflict. Try and win it with Spring the Trap uh, with a worm from Hagger Basin. And just try and cash in for like maximum points. That's what his logic is here. I would have been so tempted to pull the trigger there. I guess maybe I'm the one in the wrong. I don't know. Anyway, Stablan, uh, Sieges. Irulan, continue to be allowed to do anything she wants. It's almost a Wadib. Fade will fire him deep desert here. Looking to obviously get turn it into all this all the good stuff here. He's got he's pulled beast spores as well in his hand here, so it's hard to see how he doesn't win this conflict. What Fade Rafa needs to do is find his way to High Council some point. So that he can cash in Count's Ambition and get a second Deep Desert going. That's what he needs to do here. Deep Desert is the absolute crux of Fade Rafa's plan. He needs to hit it twice, and he needs to win big both times. <coughs> this is a good place to start here. He can just turn this into a lot of points. Spice right is, is like, if you can get this Worms and get those uh, Spice Caches in, this is basically a tier 3 conflict for you. Absolutely huge. And no one else is really... This is an interesting... Would Staban... Oh, look at this. And Staban is going to Hagger Basin. Is Staban going to throw and spring the trap here? But he doesn't have enough Spice to cash in. It'd be just a denial. Irulan just draws twice. Pulls his spice must flow. Surely he's going to get ringed here. He's at 7 persuasion plus high council for 9. It's a little bit awkward. Wadib. Just going to deliver supplies. Taking the point. Needs it desperately for Shreesha to stop piling, of course. Desperately need resources. Also, if he reveals Fedekin, it gives him all, it gives him chances at maybe Deep Desert in next round if he feels he really wants to, depending on what the conflict is. If it's like a war or war conflict, he can do that. If not, then he just holds on to the water for stockpiling. But he needs another bump with the Fremen, though. What's Fade going to do here? Fade's got to chuck it in. Fade realises he feels he's being threatened here. He feels he's just got to get stuck in here. Maximum 
maximum uh, amount of volume here. Unfortunately, if Stabat wants to win this, he can. But he didn't spring the trap the last one. This would really hurt Phaedra if he got if he got sprung the trap and lost here. This would be absolutely brutal. Benny Jester Operative is in hand. I think using it for like secrets looks pretty good. Um, espionage, I don't think it helps. You don't really want to be drawing here. I know you've got the espionage contract, but I don't think it's a big deal. I think secrets looks pretty good here. It also is more ammunition for spring the trap as well. It means you can save your Hagger base and spy. You don't have to spend it. It comes down to do you want to win this fight or not? If you win it, like the damage you're going to do to Fade is absolutely outrageous. So. You know, but you're falling behind in this game, man. Maybe he feels he should have done it previous time. I don't know. Either way, I think Secrets is just totally fine. Get another entry, put a spy down, see how it plays out, I guess. Like, Fade would be absolutely crippled if he loses this. And I would go as far as say, if, if Staban goes in here, I legit think that, like, I mean, Irulan just becomes a massive favorite. I don't see how, it's hard to see how Irulan gets stopped, really, at this point. Fade absolutely desperately needs this. It doesn't strike me that Staban's going to spring the trap here. It doesn't strike me that he's going to. Irulan's just going to go, yep. Yeah. Go here. Trash that for the spice. You know, just unobstructed points here. A counter for Wadib. Fade with the four swords. Free to buy. He might go for, like, something. I don't know. Just goes for a prepare. A bit like, sort of, a, or sure, whatever sort of move. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, it's, it's twice those the barns committed a lot of troops for not much. Spice us for Irulan, of course. Easy as you like. So here we go. The Staban pull the trigger here. If he had, if he had a third spice, I'd think a hundred percent he would. But I don't know. I'm not sure here. I feel like if he's going to pull it here, he probably should have done it last time. But it doesn't strike me that he's going to pull the trigger. But he does! Oh my gosh. It's a dagger in Rick's heart. It's an absolute catastrophe to not cash in on this, on this conflict here. The barn gets two bumps wild. He can take wherever he wants. He's got to go for an alliance, right? Do you, do you go for the Espena Jessera and get in front of Irulan? I quite like that, to be fair. You've got to try and stop Irulan winning. She's like, you know, massive favorite now. If you want to try and stop her winning, you've got to go for it and get in front, which is exactly what he does. Picks up to part for Arrakis. That's a nice one for him. Yeah, that is absolute catastrophe for Rick there. That is three points lost. Brutal. So round six is Imperial Basin. No wall, of course. I've no idea if Wadib's going to... I assume he's going to go Hagger Basin here. Maybe just Hagger Basin, but not actually try and win it. Although, if you win it, it's a ton of spice. It's just good for stop playing. Anyways, yeah. Wadim's going Hagger Basin with Stilgar, I think, every day here. Looking at what he can draw here. Irulan just needs to end this game ASAP here, basically. Three points to grab. Needs money from spice from finery, so goes in for that, of course. Corinth City's on its way. Has guaranteed access to the Emperor if he wants to send it there. Six Persuasion. Obviously, if you're spending Corinth City, you can't really get Spice Must Flow, though. Because you've got to discard two cards as well as pay the five Solari. So it's almost impossible to do both unless like you draw an absolutely insane amount of cards, which I have done once before. I have like Corinth and got Spice Must Flow. It was a crazy round. I think Wadib's got a... You gotta chuck on a worm here, surely. Like, everything's good for you. Spice is good, water is good. 
He'd be hoping he, you know, he might not be interested in winning it though. Pulls his Diplo. Fade espionages. Mm. He's looking to, I think, to go. He might be looking to go uh, research station here. Trying to spice us flow it. Leverage played for Stabarn. Let's see a ton actually. He puts his own research station contract. Solid car, uh, agent recall comes up. It's pretty nice. Nope, gonna do it this way. So he's gonna be able to put a couple of cards away. Hmm, I think I would have been tempted to discard the the convincings actually, but whatever. So discards, repulls, find special mission again. Must, of course, recall the previous agent. But yeah, it, 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 Leonardo has just, it's just, it just basically just, just done his own thing. And no one else has been able to make a decisive victory out of combat. So, you know, it's a scramble second place here. Your line's just got to close this out, basically, at this point. Recent station is done for Fade. He will, of course, pull the Intrigue for the Spy. Picks up a uh, Contingency. Nice to have. Unfortunately, Fade's only at 6 Persuasion here. If he's after a Spice or Slow, he's nowhere near it. But we have a couple of actions to go here. Bene Gesserit has been completely blocked out, which he's not going to be too happy about. Could go Siege for Research Station next round. Could go Arakeen now. She does. I think I would have preferred Siege personally. I don't think the extra card draw is helping you out a ton right now. I think I would have preferred Siege and pick up the water. Actually, he's going to play the part Arrakis. He's going in. It is a pairing conflict, so I guess it makes sense. So your has got an action. You just go like assembly hall. Maybe accept contract for Sardu Car. I don't know. Or you just go siege. We'll just go set contract. Pause a Diplo. I don't think that's what he wanted to see. That's a bad draw. He's going to take the solo contract, though. I had a feeling he'd be after that. But uh, pause his Diplo. Does he want to trash anything with his ring? Or does he, he can't... There, he could pick up... Um, there is a potential. He could legitimately decide to just take Unswerving Lord in his hand just to generate a troop. He'd give him six Persuasion in hand. Maybe you can pick up something interesting. I don't hate it. It's either that or you're trashing, convincing, or diplo from your hand. And he might feel he's done buying Spice Plus Flows. He's just going to rely on Corinth City and picking up his uh, spacing point. But again, he's it's a bit awkward. He pulled his diplo. He did not want to see that. So, a bit inconvenient. But not really in any particular danger still at this point. Looking still very strong. <laughs> Sorry. I'm trying to mute the uh, the mic before it happens. It's, it's a bit too quick. Throat infections suck. But hey, the penicillin's done a decent job. I did not sound anywhere near this good two days ago. I can thoroughly assure you. So what does Mar Reed want to do here? He's got Stilgar. He does not have to play here. He's got two, four, five, nine. He's got 13 Persuasion. He can play Stilgar and still get the Spice Must Flow. I think you got to go Fremen here because of stockpiling. He doesn't really want to draw, though, but he might pull his Spy. He waits to keep the water. Yeah, doesn't pull the Spy. He's going to be happy just to uh, sit here. What, what Mardip needs to do is he's going to attempt to try to get hold of it. Puts an extra troop here. It's going to be a bit of a waste of force. He pulls, um, he's got weird in combat as well from, I don't entirely know when that came from, but he's got it. Oh, he went secrets. I didn't even spot that. 
I don't really like putting the troop in. I get why he's putting the troop in, but I don't really like putting the troop in. I think either putting one or you, you either put in none or you put both of them in. I think one's a bit weird. You're like trying to get second place for cheap. Like, eh. What he wants to try to do is try and get the. He's trying to get somebody so he can like try and get the deep desert and still cash in. Street stop points. What he's kind of trying to do here, but it's very awkward. And he's going to find out that's not going to be an option for him here. Four swords for Fade. I wonder if Fade might continuously plan here. I don't think so. I think he'd rather have the water, truthfully. It's not a matching conflict for him. Fade does not buy. He's got six persuasion. Doesn't buy anything. How do you not take Captured Mentat? How do you not take Captured Mentat? Such a good card. That seems kind of wild to me. Irulan, I think, is going to be after delivery agreement here. She's got three contracts and is going to try and hit Sadu Kar and just end the game, basically. Staban puts in his... Uh, Staban goes for his uh, his worm. Not a surprise. Going all in on Spice here. He's going to look to try and cash in with the Heimer contract. Now, Irulan goes for Captured Mentat instead. Both are good. Both are absolutely huge cards. Massive favourite to win this game. Wardeep's got nine. So he gets his Spice Must Flow. Gets an Intrigue, of course, for the worm for the combat. Pulls Manipulate. Cannot use that for the Spice Must Flow. Makes us a bit awkward now. But he is first act next round. So actually, it's not that bad. He's going to use something. What's it means about it? If he puts another Spice Must Flow, it's worth double points now. Nothing else to do here. So Staban's going to have uh, not really much to buy. He gets one dagger. Uh, Calculus of Power does not... He doesn't have another Emperor card in play, so he can't trash it for some more swords if he feels he wants to. But the one sword will do the trick. Don't expect anything to happen here unless Mardi feels he wants to throw the swords in to try and get second place. But I don't see him doing it. I think he'll just manipulate next round and call it a day. So that is combat done. So two water apiece for them. Staban will take the conflict and the troops and he'll get the matching point. And we'll get ready for the tier freeze here. Is there any way that Irulan can be stopped here? It's Arakeen. So green gets the backup troop. I don't think that's going to be particularly relevant here. Irulan is not going to try and win this through combat. It's just going to kind of sit there and, you know, be sacrificed. Wadi pulls leadership. Pulls Stilgar. Pulls all sorts of stuff. Wow. Wow. Choices. It is a matching combat for RD, but it's the double spy recall, which is awkward. It means you can't get maximum points out of it. You know, there's no chance to uh, double resource dip because you only can get a maximum of three spies. And there's no way to generate spies like in the bit after having one combat. It's, it's not possible. So, Irulan would be very happy to see this spy. This is the best conflict you could have come out. Propaganda would have been a bit awkward, perhaps. I think she'd be totally happy to see this. Two of her comp uh, components do match on this, though. I think he's going to research station. Mardi feels he's just got to try and make for this uh, extra spice must flow. Which is exactly what he does. Figures he's just got to try and get it. It's double worth double points. He's got to play an intrigue, though. He cannot risk being stolen here. Yeah, manipulate is played. So, just just whack it somewhere there. So, that'll be me play it out. It's the same access as uh, her ring. Same, de same deal. So, that'll be kept on the side, basically. Just, just to free up his hand is all that is. 
Vader Alpha has no faction access. He's got no shipping access. He's lost access to reset station. This is not good for Fader Alpha. I think he's just going to have to go out and hang a base with pistol and see what happens. It's a bad draw for him, though. This is the worst conflict he could have seen, truthfully. Doesn't match him. Doesn't have the spies. So he's just going to get stuck in. Finds Truth Trance. It's a good find for him. What's the bar I want to do here? Is he off the side of the car? He is off the side of the car. So these troops will be going in. He can't put in the he can't put in the garrison troops, however. It is only troops recruited. It is not a deploying spot. Oh, he pulled up by Axis! Oh my gosh! It's actually live as well. That's an insane pull. But he's got no way to generate the point at the Spacing Guild. Does he ever give up a Spacing Guild and just bump the the, the better gesture out of safety? You just see what happens there. You're alarmed with Mentat. So she's off to shipping. Oh no, she can't go shipping though. What's going on here? Yeah, I think she's going to go shipping there, but she has not got access either. Only Yellow can go there. That's exactly what, Ir what Irulan was going to try to do there, but is not, is hasn't got the access. So I suspect the spy will just go onto Araki and is just going to draw a load of cards. Irulan desperate to get over the line here. Needs two points. I suspect to capture Bentat might well be revealed here um, to shift away from the Bene Gesserit to pick up the spacing point. It will just pick up Spice's flow and hope ten points is good. I think that's what might happen here. Signal Ring is played for it. Prepare the way. Diplo's found. I do not believe he'll be trashing anything at this point. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to see here from Irulan. Irulan's just going to just get Spice Plus Flow. Um, he's at 10 Persuasion. Just going to get Spice Plus Flow, get the spacing point, shut eyes, and hope they're good. And hope that they're not caught. But I don't know. This combat, some weird stuff could happen here. Why is chasing? Spice, secure spice trade is making it awkward. Jesus, not playing. He's also there as well. Eevee Bomb might intrigue his way out of trouble here. He's got to decide what he wants to commit for here. Steelgar is worth six persuasion on reveal currently. I don't think I can I can justify play. Oh my god, he does. I guess he figures he's going to double draw, but it's so much persuasion. But he figures he gets the point. And he needs the wall for stockpiling as well. I guess he's just going to gamble. He gets to eight. Legit think you might see Wadib go assembly hall here. He didn't need the wall. He had for Dakin. Highliner for Fade Ralpha. Now he's pulled it. So he's gonna just going to shove it all in here. Fade can't win this, unfortunately, this combat. He's trying to just battle for spots here. If Wadib can win this combat, it's game over. Is Spice was following enough for him? He's at seven. Shoes top piling would be eight. Spice was following would be worth two points. I get him to ten. He might win this on tiebreaker. He could possibly win this on tiebreaker. Here on this whole game has gone without uh, Swordmaster here. This would be a heck of a comeback for Mardeeb. It comes by access. So we'll take that point, gets a spy. He's going to just... I think he just has to protect his Bene Gesserit Alliance. I don't see any way for him to get... But you see, he does agree. So just gives up on it. Gets a spy, wherever he wants. You just go assembly hall and just use your dagger and just hope you fluke Spice Must Flow. Is that the best way to try and score a point? Do you have another card that's worth two persuasion? Calculus is worth two. What is his top card is the question. If he knows it's a two persuasion card, he should 100% go assembly hall. If it's not a two persuasion card, then... 
Well, you can still gamble. There are some intrigues out there which let you draw. He can't win the fight. He knows there's no way he's going to win the fight. I think he's just going to go assembly hall dagger and close his eyes and hope he hope he wins it. Oh, he's double drawing. Oh, oh, oh this can't be right. Oh, he knew it wasn't his. Uh, that's why he, he knew it wasn't his thing. Piece of distraction. It can't help him at all. Hold on, he's got to pull his second card. Recon. Well, nothing he did was going to help him there. Here along goes secrets for the double for the double intrigue draw. Doesn't help. Doesn't have the spice. Not doing a whole lot, unfortunately. But Irulan doesn't really care. Irulan's going to get to 10 here. And he's just going to hope that they, that Muad'Dib doesn't win this. I don't see how Muad'Dib does. Oh my god. So Muad'Dib's in an insane spot here. I think he has to deep desert. This is absolutely insane here. He's at 2, 4, 6, 7, 8 persuade. He's at 10 persuasion. I think you have to sacrifice the point of strategic stockpiling to go deep desert and try and win this combo. It's plus six. But but I guess the argument is I think you gotta I think you gotta use I think you gotta go still tent and go deep desert. I think you've got to sacrifice a strategic stockpiling. It's one guaranteed point. If you can win this conflict though, it's like uh it's two points to win this conflict. Like if you just revealed now, like you'd get one, you get two points. You'd be at nine. Street, super price trade would get him to ten. Do you think that's enough? If you think that's enough, then don't worry about the conflict. But if you don't think that's enough, then I think you gotta go in for deep desert. It's basically what Mardi's got to decide here. Irulan only just pulled the intrigues, so that could be anything. He's got to try and calculate this out here. As it is, I think Muad'Dib actually is winning this. But he might not know that. And he might gamble. Fedra Alpha is sitting on daggers. It looks like he's going for it. He has spice of slow, of course. Courtesy of it. And he is! He is loading the gun. He's going to sacrifice a point here to try to score two. But I think he was winning this anyways. Yeah, seven points. Skewer Spice Trader giving the bonus spice. Spice Trader flow in his hand as well. Irulan's never getting third place here. It's insane. I'm pretty sure he's actually was in a winning position there. But now it's in huge doubt. I think he's good because of weirding and leadership. I think he'll be okay either way, but I think he was winning there. But I think you probably just have to shut your eyes and do it. It sucks to give on to stop piling. It's just a guaranteed point. But if you win the conflict and get the spice of slow, like you win the game. Pretty insane comeback this from RD, really. Irulan was so comfortably ahead for a lot of this. It was a pretty good conflict for a two. But I guess maybe the alliance situation. Maybe it would be better if uh, propaganda had come out. I don't know. That was pretty close. Both have got problems. Sabanja's so is going to get some dudes in. Honestly, I would have just kept the spice. I wouldn't have bothered spending it. I think coming here to spend two for the intrigue makes total sense, though. <coughs> Sorry. But I would not have bothered going and spending the spice spice of army. Picks up Desert Mouse. Oh! Desert Mouse is no good for him. 
It's what what Ira and I would have liked, but I don't think she ever would have got to it. It is a return spice though. So it looks like Evie's gonna take this one down here. It is gonna be good. He's comfortably ahead. Leadership is offering him. He's got five swords in hand here. Fade Rafa cannot catch. What well, is going to take this one down? I think Lanny would be a little disappointed not to close this one out. But he'll he'll live with the second place finish. Extra entry from Wardeeb. Inspire Raw. Uh, he can actually get some extra swords in his hand here. So he can get hold of. Uh, an extra sword. He can't use it. I really guess he could use it to get in Swerving Loyalty. I actually don't know. But it's an extra sword. It doesn't matter. He's good regardless. It's plus two swords. It's all fine. Spice was slow as well. It's a good spice trade's going. This one is over. Don't want to come back here. He's in a really awkward spot. But round seven does it again. It's funny those XSG spice are slows. That's what did it. That's what's going over the line here. I'm realizing he had to gamble at Deep Desert. He didn't like doing it, but it was the right call. And he's going to take this down, and it'll be comfortably good. And that is all she wrote. So Mwadib's going to score one, two, three points here. And secure Spice trade for an extra one as well. Nothing else to be played here. Yvonne will take this one down and we'll get back-to-back -back victories. Eyeing up quarterfinal spots here. Lancer was still on the second place, though. Like, um, played pretty decent well enough for it. He'll be very happy with that. You know, nine points from two games is still pretty strong. He's going to take a bit of catching from his opposition. Yeah, and he realized now he was, uh, you know, wasn't particularly far. Not a bad third place, I don't think, for Cloudy. It was a bit of a tricky game for him, but I think he organized it pretty well. Rick will be very disappointed. Absolutely blown apart from Spice Raiders. And that was uh, that was the death knell from there. Crippling, crippling loss that. Two bad rounds in a row. That that's gonna do you that's gonna do you in. Yeah, Spice Raiders was was pretty pretty brutal. It was I mean it was always gonna be that way. It'd be fair, I actually thought Red was gonna spring the previous one and then they didn't. I was like, no, I saw <laughs> It was, I was very like, close. And I, I know it was close. And I saw Spice I'm thinking this is going to be pretty bad for Fade. I don't think he's going to pass it up twice. And that's exactly what happened. You, you needed that to get yourself back in the game. And yeah, yeah it was yeah. pretty, pretty brutal stuff. It uh, was either that or like waiting for seven, which was came up to be the worst combat for me as well. I want to put this out. I mean, this is pretty bad for most people, truthfully. It wasn't even that great for Mardi, honestly. Mm -hmm. No. Oh, well, missing that slow last round really hurt me. Oh my god! Like, uh, no, like prop probably would have helped. Uh, uh, slar combat. I think I could have gotten something off of, and spice combat definitely because yeah. I just play my ring. Yeah, it was a very strange game in a way. Like, you know, see, you know, Green was able to just kind of do whatever they want for the vast majority of the game. Um, you know, pretty clear game plan. I think perhaps the the lack of the alliance is what kind of really hurt though. I felt like Actually, it was... doing that cut. Uh, when he won that combat against uh, Fade, really messed me up, and yeah, uh, yeah that that took away the alliance from me. And uh, it, uh, missing that spice was full of the previous round also cost me. Yeah, yeah, really this good. this was this was this was this was obviously bad for you. I mean, like once once I mean once the barn he didn't have to go there, but I think once yeah. the barn commits himself, to this, he like he has to go for it to try to stop you. I mean, otherwise he's just kind of basically playing for the second yeah. place. So he's, he's kind of has no choice. Um, yeah, like him winning that would have was really bad for you, like. Me winning that, I I probably ignore you. Oh, yeah, it's it's it's, free, it's like three points for you minimum. It's an absolute. Yeah, yeah no, like like I just ignore you because like I I I think I can beat you anyways. 
theory, right? So that was huge. But uh, no, I mean, other than that, you know, kind of fade out and, uh, you know, allow Mwadi the chance to get stuck in. I know you did not want to say goodbye to Street Stop Piling, but you recognized oh. that you, you Deep Desert was the right move. Yeah, when I drew, when I had this kind of going, I had an extra behind it. I was like, I'm basically giving up a point. I get to, I can get to ten, and I have him on spice. Yeah, but I, I didn't want to risk the two comp. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He obviously just pulls two intrigues, and they can obviously be anything. Like, yeah, exactly. Uh, if if, if, if he'd been sitting on them the whole game, maybe it'd be different. I mean, oh, but I yeah, you, you're giving you're giving up a point to try to score. You know, like two more basically is what you're yeah, trying to do. Exactly. Right? And I think. You know, you know if you win it, like even if you miss and you still get the spice was slow, like you're still kind of there there ish about. It's a bit awkward there, yeah. I guess. But uh, yeah. no, other than that seemed pretty pretty good spinner, man. Hmm. Well done, Evie Bump. Floaty face. You should have just kept to yourself, man. You could have had the spacing alliance. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Alone. <laughs> yeah, oh my god, Cloud Cloudy keep keeping yourself literally helps benefits me, both me and Lenny. Because <laughs> no. uh, uh, I straight up just ignore you on this alliance because I don't fucking care. Yeah, I understand though. It was, it was a good move. It's a good move. This is unfortunate you that you didn't have the from. Yeah, no. It was, yeah, it didn't, didn't pull. It was, a, it was a pretty, it was not a great round for hand for round seven. It was not, not ideal. Was yeah. looking for not axis. had good deal for half, for six either. Cause like I drew all my access to Highlander for, on six. Yeah. I yeah. need a fast cycle. Cloudy, Cloudy Face did a double hurt on me. He, he took that alliance. And then that turn when he took Eric Keen, I was like, oh my God, I needed that so bad to do yeah. that double draw. Oh, he needed oh. it as well. Cause his hand was not, it was not great either. So he was kind of forced into it. Yeah. Yeah. Direct me. I mean, I think my starting hand was, <laughs> wasn't it? Something like that. Maybe it was. I mean, guard. if you have ring, it I think it helps a lot. Yeah, I mean, I and I had a spy down too, so I just drew four to save it. Yeah, yeah. But you, I, you, I, you honestly, I wanted to go here first. Yeah. Um, because I was worried about it, but yeah, but miraculously, yeah. fate didn't have it either. So you know, yeah, it's the way. Pretty much sucked throughout most of the game. I, I was just banking on my contracts to carry me throughout the day. That was it. Yeah, I, I thought at one point you might have had an interest in maybe going for like delivery agreement instead, but uh... no. So here's a look at the tables after that one. And Evie Bomb indeed is going to be standing proud here. Two wins from two means he takes a dominant position in the groups and is going to be feeling pretty likely to make his way through to the quarterfinals directly. Far from guaranteed at this point, but it's going to have to take some chasing down from the rest of the competition. And I think also be pretty happy as well. He'd be a little disappointed, I think, not to win this game. Maybe he feels that, you know, a couple of things kind of went against him at the end. And it's true that it definitely did. But uh, still was going to be feeling fairly solid. But work left to do in this tournament. b Raffi and Rich Troll find themselves with four points from two games, which isn't a fantastic return, truthfully. And they're going to need to try and find a win in their remaining games to have any realistic shot of making the top two. Otherwise, it's going to be a scrap for the wildcard playoffs. But other than that, though, yeah, I think it was a pretty solid game. Uh, it's definitely interesting. It's not the first time, interestingly, that I've seen Lanny kind of go, have a really strong lead, but having no sword master and it kind of falling away at the end there. I think especially with a card like Corinth City, having that extra card draw and that extra action is so, so important because you need to try to find Corinth as much as possible so that you can obviously get it used off here. And just not allowing yourself a ton of options, meaning that he just wasn't able to find a way to sign in out. Maybe a little bit unfortunate how round six went down and maybe the fact that uh, Cloudy... Um, you know, be Ralphie. Maybe should have pulled the trick of the round before, but I get why they didn't. And round six was just simply too appealing. And of course, that was going to cause absolute devastation to Rick there. No doubt about that. Uh, and it was up for Evie Bomb to, you know, pick up the pieces. And he did definitely manage to do so. Maybe a touch fortunate to get hold of the Fremen Alliance in at the round seven, um, seeing that obviously Fade didn't pull the access. And that might have made for a bit of a different story. But uh, regardless, it is what it is. That's going to about do it for us here for the video. You guys have enjoyed. Um, you know, obviously, I hope in future videos my voice will be in a bit of a better state. It's not 100% at the moment, but it's been okay. It's held out pretty well. And it's still a bit tricky doing commentary for Uprising games. Definitely the perception for them, as opposed to, say, doing like a Rise of X and Immo, which we're very familiar with. There's still a lot to learn, and there's still times where things are going to be... It's not so clear what people are trying to do. 
does make commentary, I think, a bit of a trickier job from my experiences. But, you know, I've covered, like, better part, like, 200 XMO games. I've covered two uprisings. We'll kind of get there as we do. Anyways, uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed. If you do, obviously we have more content of this coming on the channel. And also, of course, if you like what we do, please feel free to support the channel as well. Give us a follow uh, and follow what we do here. Um, you know, if you guys weren't sitting around and watching these games, then we ultimately wouldn't be making them. So we do have you to thank for that. I'm going to go give my throat a uh, of rest. I think you've earned it. Have a good evening, everyone. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you in the next conflict.